when something, whether it was Hubble or now Webb, captures your imagination, when you start seeing those images, it's like when you look up the night sky, it's like, wow, I can't, you know, I can't see that, but I know it's, I know that kind of stuff is out there. We all kind of wonder where we came from. We're all made up of cosmic dust. And, you know, by looking back in time and understanding where the universe started and how it started, we kind of get a better understanding of where we came from and how we got to where we are. So I think a lot of that just drives folks. Um, I know it drives me. My name is Bill Oakes, and I was the James Webb Space Telescope project manager for the last almost 12 years. Before that, I managed two other Earth science programs. And then before that, I worked on the Hubble telescope from the time it was being constructed through the first two servicing missions for almost 20 years. So when you look at the innovation and the complexities of Webb, in a very, very broad sense of the word, it is the largest on-orbit observatory ever launched. We have over six times, or almost six and a half times, the light collecting area in our primary mirror than what Hubble has. The other big game changer then is we're an infrared telescope, whereas Hubble was primarily a visible UV telescope. And the reason we're infrared is one of our big science goals is to look back at the origins of the universe. And if you look at some of the results we've had right now, you can look at things and, and we've looked at some galaxies and you've seen neon, carbon dioxide, we've seen water vapor already on an exoplanet. So we can tell if those exoplanets have the very basic elements of life. And then some of the more exciting things that we're gonna be looking at are the, what we call the Goldilocks planets. Those are the ones that we, as far as we can tell right now, are most Earth-like. And what they do is they compare the size of the exoplanet to the size of the Earth the distance from its sun versus ours. And you get a feel for, okay, this is, hey, this is pretty much like us. You kind of learn every time you make an observation. Somebody might think, well, you know, I saw this when I did this with the telescope. But if I do this with the telescope, I might see something else. Before Hubble, no one ever really knew about black holes. You know, it was more of a theory or anything, if anything. So you begin to learn some more about that, and that prompts you to go do other things. So there's plenty of things to do over the next 20 years with Webb. When I came on board almost 12 years ago, we probably had about 1,500 people working on it. Now that we've launched and we're doing on-orbit operations, it's probably up around close to 400 folks. So you count everybody. It's over 20,000 people. I tell folks all the time, the 12 years that I was in the program, I never heard anybody say, I give up, I don't know how to fix this. And I knew that same attitude would be there when we got on orbit. But I never, I never lacked any confidence. Now, if you asked me, did you think it was going to work as perfect as it did? I would have said, no, nah, we'll probably have a few glitches along the way that we'll have to solve. And we had one during deployments that, that came up that we actually had seen in integration and testing, so we already kind of knew how to resolve them. So yeah, there's a lot of pride, not not just self-pride, but pride in my entire team. Um, I, I just, I can never say enough about my team. I don't want another challenge like Webb. That was once in a lifetime. Twice in a lifetime, it'll kill you. But, uh, but you know, I love challenges, so I just keep looking for challenges. <laughs>